Sequels are made for all kinds of reasons. All kinds of reasons. I've always been baffled by sequels coming out like 20 years later you know, after the original, especially when there's still a good story to be told there. And to be honest, I'm also baffled when stories don't need to be told, but they are anyways, for reasons. Sequels, 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 love them or hate them, they are here to stay. And every sequel seems to have one thing in common. They exist to make money. Seemingly. I mean, that makes sense, right? I can see how a film can be made and then shelled or buried by a studio just, you know, chalked up to a misfire. But why would a studio produce a sequel only to basically deny its existence? When it comes to obscure movie sequels, well, I can go on and on, and I will, trust me, be sure to subscribe. Now I hope I don't offend our supreme overlord with this video, as they own this film, but I guess we'll see what happens. I mean, they're notorious for bad and forgotten sequels, you know, uh, but this one in particular was especially elusive. A sequel to the classic Pauly Shore and Brendan Fraser and John Astin film, Encino Man. A movie that, indeed, set up a sequel. One I really, really thought we would get at some point, only to find out a lifetime later that we did get it. On TV. And it aired like once. Shit, no physical release, no real poster, no real record of this movie at all. And it was even written and directed by the original film's writer. Seriously, how is this not widely known? I mean, after years of searching, I've tracked it down. And I can see that there's basically no way that this movie would have ever caught on. But I mean, it's an Encino Man sequel nonetheless. Let's take a look back at this forgotten, made-for-TV, Disney classic. This is the TV Wasteland. Now, as I said, the original film was set up for a sequel, in which the titular Encino Man gets an Encino Woman of his own via very similar and coincidental happenings. And it hints at more shenanigans with Stoney, Link, and the Encino Woman. Down for that. Four years later, a made-for-TV Disney movie hit the small screens. Now, let's get into the plot here. Another cave person emerges from an earthquake, this time in Hollywood. After thawing, a young prehistoric woman, Lucy, gets herself taken care of by David. Hello, David. No, no, not that David. This time, a young intern at a marketing firm. They're working on a campaign ad for a cosmetics company, and David becomes Mr. Big Shot when his protege is chosen for the model spokesperson for her animal personality. David also has a best bud, who is also not the same guy from the original. This isn't Stony. The hair is just a huge coincidence, I'm assuming. And we get some parallels to the original film, like this. And this. I just want you to look at this and, and tell me if anything looks familiar. Problematic. You can tell that this time around, things are kind of aimed more at a female audience. With the modeling and glamour and whatnot going on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can we just... She just attacked and forced herself on this poor guy. This is still a Disney movie. Say something, David. Defend yourself. Hello, David. And while it is meant to appeal to a younger female audience, I cannot see how any of their demographic grasp this one. Seriously, I wonder what the Nielsen ratings were when this aired. 
So eventually Lucy, our cave woman, kind of gets really popular and forgets where she came from and whatnot. Uh, you know, pretty basic stuff there. Along the way, we get some fun performances from Clarence Williams III, Marissa Rabisi, Bobcat Goldthwait, and even Jeff Ross. There's also an appearance from the fabulous Wonder Twins. But no matter how you cut it, this is a direct sequel, as there are multiple mentions of that caveman from Encino a few years ago, even alluding to multiple instances of different cavemen, and revealing that Link was part of the first walking tribe in what would soon become Encino. Who knew? with the DNA model. Uh, no, 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 it's lovely. Uh, Dr. Lambert, do you remember the earthquake? Oh, yes, what? a 6.3. It was a doozy. Caltech is Yeah, yeah, no, no. To... Uh, do you remember what they said they found in the newspapers? You know, something about something in the glaciers? Oh, the yes, yes, yes. Priceless artifacts, millions of years old, almost as intriguing as when they found the first walking tribe in Africa yeah. a few months ago, the guy in Encino. Mm -hmm. But these artifacts are from the Mysterian era. Balls, arrowheads, spears. Spears? There is also a bizarre interlude featuring Michael Eisner, where he too references the first film, and he's actually quite enjoyable. I'm not sure if I can show much here, um, you know, I'm sure Encino Woman has a coveted spot in the Disney vaults, and I'm sure having Michael Eisner in your video sends warning signals directly to Mickey's ears. But here's a taste. So, uh, how long has your girlfriend been missing? Encino Woman is a bizarre little fun time, and quite the sight to behold after all these years, really making you wonder what else the House of Mouse got by just under our nose. Anybody else ever see this? Let me know what you think in the comments, and please, subscribe. If you ask me nicely, maybe I'll get this bizarre little gem in your hands. <clears throat> Nothing sketchy going on here, Mickey. Nothing at all. This is the TV Wasteland. Be sure to subscribe.